Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the June 26th, 1993 edition of Superstars of Wrestling. Um, we are fast approaching, uh, needing to go back in time as the network runs out of stuff at the 31st of July. So, but fear not, we have uh, many other options available uh, for... 1990 through 92 and hopefully some 80s stuff as well I'm going to try and do as thorough a um, superstars coverage as possible I'm not going to get all 500 episodes but if I can get 100 150 I'd be thrilled um, superstars was what I grew up on as a wrestling fan so I am the pre raw era of fan um, Matter of fact, I remember being frustrated that they were ending primetime wrestling. I remember being really sad because I got cable uh, in my house about four or five months before primetime went off the air and was looking forward to watching primetime. And then they switched to the shorter Raw format. And teenage me thought this was a ripoff. Anyway, uh, Mr. Hughes and... Tito Santana, or pre-teenage me, um, Mr. Hughes and Tito Santana are going at it pretty quickly here. Um, Hughes basically allows Santana, for lack of a better term, to go after his uh, his arm for a bit because he just kind of stands there. Big arm drag, and Hughes does take a rather big bump for that arm drag. Uh, Harvey Whippleman outside with The Undertaker's urn, holds the urn up almost mocking Paul Bearer, and a short knee from um, Mr. Hughes gets things going back in Hughes's direction. Kick also big boot by Hughes. Hughes having very little trouble with Tito Santana once he gets his bearings about him. Took him a minute. But uh, Santana, a guy who's been around the WWF since about 1984 without any major breaks, um is a big deal here manages to hit the flying forearm you would have, would assume that's over one two and believe it or not in a rare occurrence mr hughes kicks out of the flying forearm hooks the tights on a roll through on a an attempted splash and then we move forward that way um and then we kind of see uh, the update on the Steiner brothers winning the tag team championships. Uh, they won them on a Monday. Uh, we see photos of this. And then they, they are the tag team champions here. Um, so uh, that's kind of part of the update. Doink the Clown versus Scott Dane is up next. And obviously Doink still kind of in the way of crush little bit less than he was. Uh, we do get, in July, a couple of Steiners and uh, Money Incorporated matches here. Um, anyway, Doink makes his way to the ring, has a typical, um, you know, takedown approach. Uh, actually hits a leaping, bombs away into the face of the opponent, which... At the time, if you if you followed our World Class series, which, by the way, is 340 episodes long, uh, you, you would know that um, Bourne, under under the name Matt Bourne, was using that, that maneuver. Uh, delayed power slam and a stump puller by Doink, and he gets the victory. Again, Mr. Fuji talks about the Stars and Stripes Challenge. They actually do a graphic of the USS Intrepid behind Yokozuna holding the championship. Um, Fuji challenges any red-blooded American to slam Yokozuna and then Crush promises he will do this uh, in a short 30-second promo. Crush is insulted for Americans and he says he will uh, slam Yoko. Uh, head shrinkers against Mike Davis and Buddy Lane up next. And obviously this is just a Enhancement talent match for the Head Shrinkers. Afa makes his way out with the Head Shrinkers. Afa, of course, a former tag team champion multi-time in his own right about 10 years prior to this. Um, hip toss by one of the Head Shrinkers and they whip into the middle of the ring followed by a power slam by the Head Shrinkers and they are, again, very dominant. They, If they want to work with you, they do. If they don't, they just muscle you around. 
It seems like they're a little bit aggressive in this match. At least it looks that way. I could be off and just seeing things that aren't there, but um, one of the enhancement talents takes quite a number of shots. Uh, back suplex by one of the head shrinkers, and they are continuing to be at their best. They hit the uh, double, uh, I guess you'd say the double stroke that Jeff Jarrett used to use, top rope splash, Head shrinkers win face to face with the narcissist Lex Luger. He's still posing and looking at himself like he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Just strikes me as odd that when you think that less than ten days later he's he's one of the bigger baby faces in the company. It's just really weird how quick that that turn happened and how things can all happen in one day. Tatanka promises to challenge Yokozuna and attempt to slam him. He says he's doing it for Native American pride. We get the rematch that nobody really wanted, Bastion Booger and Virgil, uh, here this week on Superstars. I say nobody wanted it because I can't imagine that anybody would. Um, needless to say, this is a pretty big deal. Virgil having to duck and dodge, catches the foot of Bastion Booger, manages to take him down and hit the, you know, kick to the kick to the lower midsection slash groin. Not exactly babyface material, but meh, nobody really seems to care about this. Anyhow, um, Virgil with a kick to the to the face and then a clothesline uh, by Booger and, well, um, Bastion kind of goes rather aggressively tossing Virgil around the ring, goes to the mid middle rope, big splash off the middle rope, one, two, and three. Booger gets the victory here, so they're one and one. Please tell me that does not lead to a rubber match series probably did on raw or another program but needless to say wasn't very impressed with the match anyhow we move along another men on a mission promo they promise to um you know bring their brand of merriment to the world wrestling federation uh again the rap gimmick plus them being African-American plus kind of the idea that they're inner city. Would, I don't think all of that would get over today. Maybe it would, but I think you'd probably get some social groups uncomfortable with this presentation. Bam Bam Bigelow makes his way out for an interview. He says he has another side to himself. He said he says he has feelings. Brings out Luna as his main squeeze, a.k.a. girlfriend. Um, that's just bizarre. Luna basically compares him to Arnold Schwarzenegger and other movie stars. I think Mel Gibson's in there somewhere. Uh, basically saying he he's um, incredibly attractive. Uh, Mr. Perfect faces a friend of mine and regular enhancement talent, Burt Santino. Um... And, you know, Bert gets tossed around quite a bit. Henning, not really direct at Shawn Michaels at this point, but they will do promos to lead up to SummerSlam, which we will not fully see because we run out of stuff to watch here in, in about five more episodes. But a um, uh, big drop kick by Henning right under the chin of Santino. Manages to continue, takes the straps down, hits the axe, and the perfect flex. One, two, three, victory. Uh, face to face with Money Incorporated, they complain about being uh, cheated out of the tag team championships. They want the Steiners again. They don't think the way that the Steiners won was fair. We didn't really see that, so we don't know. I think they actually show the match on a later Superstars. I'm not 100% sure on that. I do know. There are a couple of Superstars matches with the Steiners and Money Incorporated. And then we see the Hacksaw Duggan music video for USA from the Slam Jam album from 1993 that was number four on the UK charts. That's there. And we are done with June of 1993. Superstars of Wrestling will be back with more right after this. <laughs> 